Grace and peace to you. This is yours truly, Bishop Bowser, coming at you once again. You know, Wes Watson is a egomaniac. You know, I saw a, um, a video of him, and a lot of people have been talking about this. He was on a fresh and fit panel, and um, I believe he got into it with a gentleman by the name of Andrew Wilson. And um, the way he portrayed himself, you know, I, I think his motto is, is um, a riches ripped and rare. Um, that's all fine and dandy. You know, who doesn't want to have wealth and money? Who doesn't want to um, be well fit, right? I go to gym, but I'm not well fit, but I'm trying to get there. Uh, who doesn't want to be rare or be distinguished, be a distinguished person? And so on. we all want to do. But I think the uh, what ended up happening is when we don't have character, when we don't have any good morals about ourselves, uh, when we think money is what make us, right? Money don't make man, may man make money, right? And so, but when we begin to think these things is what define us, then we become egotistical, we become conceited, and we become what Wes Watson has turned into because he has no character and he hasn't really been trained and taught how to be a real man. Uh, he has become this egomaniac. An egomaniac is is someone that that um, everything they self absorb everything is about themselves. They constantly talk about themselves, um, sharing every detail of their lives and and dominating the conversation, right? And that's what he did to um, Andrew, right? Uh, demanding attention and praise from others, and often becoming angry and upset. Uh, when they don't receive it. See how he just tried to dominate that whole panel. He, you know, an egomaniac, they um, display a sense of superiority, right? Looking down on uh, other people and criticizing their achievements or opinions, right? The brother Andrew was just um, uh, giving an opinion about um, what he thought success was. And then, you know, um, Wes Watson took that personal, right? And so that's what egomaniacs do. They engage in self-grandizement, aggrandizement, right? Um, such as exaggerating their accomplishments or credentials. My money and I'm fit and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that don't really make you anything. The Bible says physical training is of some value, right? It is of some value. But godliness holds value in this life and in the life to come. And when you talk about money, the scriptures talks about and says that wealth, right? Wealth means nothing on the day of judgment. Wealth will get you nowhere on the day of judgment. And that's one of the things that we have to understand when we talk about wealth. Wealth is worthless uh, on the day of wrath or on the day of judgment. And, and, and of course, money meets the, 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 uh, the resource is the answer to all things. Uh, it is a resource for all things, but money don't make us. The, a lot of people talk about the church, so, well, you know, if money is, is, is nothing, then why uh, the church always asks for money? The Bible says the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And so when you have the love of money, you become corrupt and you become controversial and you become conceited and so on. When, when, when money is what you're about rather than being a man. Uh, one of the things that I um, heard um, Kevin Samuels talk about when he was here is he talked about a high value man. And I do agree with some of the things that he said in regard to that. By the way, I do love, I really used to love listening to, and I still do listen to uh, Kevin Samuels, you know, uh, from the perspective of he, <laughs> he, he brilliant, you know, you know, brilliant man and came up with some um, uh, great ideals or great um, conversation with, with women and so on. And so I really liked that, learned a lot from it, listening to it and so on. But the one thing that I did not agree with is, is how you define a, a man, right? A high value man, everything is centered around money, how much money you make and and your network of, of the people that you're connected with that are high valued and, and your physical um, uh, makeup or what have you. Those things are great. You know, uh, we should do those things. And, and who don't want to be wealthy? Who don't want to have money? The blessings of the Lord brings wealth and he has no trouble to it. So we most definitely want to be wealthy and have uh, uh, be financially stable so we can provide for our family. Because, of course, being a man, that means that you are um, 
Um, number one, you got to put God first and obey God and so on. But also it means that you're righteous, you're godly. It means that you're the head, the ruler and authority over your house. But that don't give you authority for physical abuse, verbal abuse or uh, psychological abuse. And sometimes that's what people, egomaniacs do uh, when they uh, have that sense of authority. And, and it's also to love your wife because a man was put here uh, to obey God, uh, to dominate and rule the earth and to... Uh, unite with his wife and replenish the earth or be fruitful, right? And those are the things we're supposed to do. But in the process of that, we're supposed to be a good husband and a good father, right? A righteous father and a righteous husband. And that's what a high value man is, is when he really have good character and qualities about himself that are godly, that is righteous, that is acceptable to God. No man can define what a high value man is or a man in general is, only God can do that, right? Because God created man. And so God is the one that can do that. But back to uh, uh, Wes Watson and, and uh, being this egomaniac, we really got to get to a place to where that um, we start teaching these men how to love and respect people, right? Because if you love someone, um, the Bible tells us that love does not dishonor others. So you can't say that you're walking in love, you're walking in respect when you do that. And and I've heard from a lot of my homies, you know, I'm from the streets, uh, got saved at a young age, and 22 and a half years old, um, but they've a lot of them been in prison, I haven't. And one of the things that they, all of them tell me that a big thing in prison is respect, right? You can't even walk across a person, you may not touch anything, you to say excuse me. And so everything is about respect. And uh, this guy spent 10 years in prison. Seemed like he hasn't learned anything. Or at least he's coming out here trying to be the macho, the big guy, because he got a lot of money and he's fit and things like that. But that's, that, that stuff is not going to get you nowhere when it comes to eternal life and being right with God. So that's what I just want to share with you. Wes Watson is an ego maniac. And I hope he find a place where he can repent and really start working on personal development so he can be a true father, a true husband, and learn how to be a real man and be that nurture, that nurture, that, that um, a provider and that protector and so on in his home and and uh, be that person who love his wife as he love himself and love his wife as Christ loved the church. That's what we're supposed to do uh, in the name of the Lord. All right, God bless you.